Basketball fans, welcome inside of the Burns Arena as we are set for another exciting edition of Trailblazer Basketball. Carrick Segmiller, Mike Olson with you inside the Burns. A very short TDS pregame show for you. Uh, we'll give you some quick Lonnie Boys barbecue keys to the game. We'll take a quick break for the anthem and then give you some Boulevard home starting lineups. Mike, good to see you again after the holiday break. Feels like it's been too long. Uh, Dixie State, a tough loss up in Monmouth, Oregon, one that I'll be honest, I wasn't shocked to see that result. I thought it might be a possibility with Western Oregon kind of having Dixie State's number up in Monmouth. That, that gym having Dixie State's number over the last few years up in Monmouth. But now Dixie State, an opportunity after the uh, the seven-day Division II moratorium. They get back. This is like their first practice, really, because this is the first day they could be back in the gym. What do you expect quickly in 30 seconds uh, or less, what do you expect tonight? And give us a few Lonnie Boys barbecues, keys to the game as the Trailblazers take on Yellowstone Christian College out of Billings, Montana. Well, it, it's nice to be back, you know, and, and for these guys, it, it's good to get back on the court again after a, after a loss and, and get ready for RMAC play. So I think what you can expect tonight is uh, get a lot of work done. I think there's a lot of things that this team wants to work on in preparation for RMAC, and hopefully tonight is the night to do that. Keys for tonight, Carrick, number one is do the little things. They really have to focus on little things tonight. They, they can't look at a record or look at a team and, um, and ignore that. They really have to focus on themselves tonight and be disciplined and do all of those little things, setting screens, timing, discipline, all of those things. And then second, they've, they've got to offensively execute. They, they can't just settle for an open shot and take it. They've, they've got to run their offense. There you have it, your Lonnie Boys Barbecue's keys to the game. Uh, we're all excited to be back in action here tonight. Carrick Segmiller, Mike Olson with you as the Trailblazers try to rid their, their their mouths of the bitter taste of a loss up in Monmouth, Oregon. But good spirits, this this team still in a fantastic spot. Uh, still undefeated in RMAC play, 5-0. and And uh, we are just about ready to get this thing underway. we got to step away. Let's take a three-minute timeout for the anthem, and then we come back with the uh, Boulevard Home starting lineups and the tip-off. Dixie State versus Yellowstone Christian College right here on the Trailblazer Basketball Network. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Can birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! For over a century, Dixie State University has been shaping the trailblazers of tomorrow by providing a culture of active learning, active life. With a paradigm of real-world experience, mixed with cutting-edge technologies and rich traditions, we provide one of the most affordable educations in the West set against the most stunning backdrop on the planet. Where do you find the titans of classical music in St. George? Classical music on Radio St. George, 100.3 FM. Where do you find the legends of jazz? Evenings on Radio St. George, 100.3 FM. Shine on me, sun's gonna shine on me. 
I'm heading out, man. You want a ride? No, I got my car, but I actually really need to go to the bathroom. Dude, are you okay? I am definitely buzzed. Yeah. I think I will take this, and I will take that ride home. Si los amas como para reaprender ecuaciones, para poder enseñárselas, entonces los amas como para visitar en htsa.gov slash protegidos y comprobar que van correctamente abrochados en el asiento trasero del auto. Exactly who they are. They're not a member of the NCAA. They're not a member of the NAIA. They're not a member of the NJCAA. They are a member of the NCCAA, the National Christian College Athletic Association. Uh, but other than that, kind of playing an independent schedule and, and traveling around, playing games. It's an exhibition game tonight for both teams, meaning that it uh, the, the doesn't count the win-loss record, doesn't count the stats, but you better believe that, that both teams are going to come out fighting tonight. Both teams want to get a win. Again, welcome inside the Burns Arena. The Trailblazers hosting the Centurions of Yellowstone Christian College. Uh, Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. Happy New Year to you, Mike. It, it's good to be back, like you mentioned, in, in the gym. If you take too much time away, it just, just doesn't feel right. you got to be back in the gym. And, and tonight, Treble just get the opportunity to do so. We talked and touched just briefly on that Western Colorado or Western Oregon game. Monmouth is a tough place to play. It's a long trip. You just had uh, tough home games in, in conference play, a tough, really tough conference road trip in which you, you raced a 17-18 you know, point second half deficit to win at New Mexico Highlands, followed by a tough chippy game at CSU Pueblo the night before. A few days later, you make the long trip right before Christmas to Monmouth, and, and this Trailblazer team you know, it just couldn't quite put it all together that night. And they're excited to be able to, to get back on the floor and try to do it tonight. Absolutely. You can tell. They've got a lot of energy. This team's ready to go. It'll be nice to get them in action. Uh, they, they've certainly... Um, put that loss behind them and focus on what's in front of them. Uh, I think tonight will be an exciting game. We've got a, a decent crowd for uh, this time of year and look for a, a very exciting, fun basketball game for Dixie State tonight. Absolutely. And it's a tough it's a tough time of year to play when the students are all gone. Yeah. We'll all have to hope that the community can rise up again this weekend when, when really important games against UC Colorado Springs and Colorado School of Lions uh, take place on Friday and Saturday. But a great crowd. Uh, and I think they've done some things to, to help the – DSU faculty and staff get into the, get into the game free tonight. And, and a great crowd as the Trailblazers get set to host the Centurions of Yellowstone Christian College. Let's give you some starting lineups brought to you by Boulevard Home. As you see uh, Dixie State starters, the end of the starters being introduced. Let's give you first the starters for the Centurions of Yellowstone Christian College. They'll start a six foot one junior guard, Devin Jones. Six foot three redshirt freshman guard, Darian Reed. A six foot one freshman guard, Marie Allen Badu. And a sophomore six foot two guard, Devante King. And a six foot 11 freshman forward, Seth Dustin from Colorado Springs, Colorado. They are led by head coach Jamil Santil, assisted by Aaron Bradley. The Trailblazers tonight, uh, they will start like this. Jack Pagankoff, Dason Youngblood. Uh, they're starting Jared Green down low. And the, the Trailblazers also uh, going a, a little bit differently tonight. Hunter, uh, not differently, Hunter Schofield is, is getting the start. And then Frank Stain getting the start as well. Jared Green, the one difference in that starting lineup. As you saw, Josh Newbold get a pair of starts earlier. And now Jared Green getting the start tonight. You know, they've definitely got a size advantage, Carrick. You, you'll see strong post play inside. Uh, you know, I, I love Jared. seeing Jared start tonight and see what he's got. You know, right from the beginning, it'll be a good game for him and hopefully for the Trailblazers. Here we go, Dixie State, Yellowstone Christian. We are underway. Trailblazers win the opening tap. And the first offensive possession. Here's Stain, a three-point shot from the left corner. It's up and in. Three-pointers brought to you by Mountain America Credit Union. And start a game much better than that offensively. 3-0 Dixie State, the advantage, 19-38 remaining. Here in the opening half. Yellowstone Christian the other way. They'll jump a three in the corner, it rimmed out. It was Voodoo, couldn't get it to go. Youngblood into the corner, Stain again. Too short, offensive rebound, Jared Green. Trailblazers reset, Stain in the lane and he's fouled. He goes to the free throw line. Great start from the freshman Stain. You know, very aggressive outside. Saw him knock down that three-pointer. Now off the dribble, so that's what you want to see out of that freshman. The foul will go against Voodoo. 
Pagan Kopp, the trigger, finds Schofield, jumper left side, off the back of the iron, tapped out, and Youngblood will regain possession. Over to Pagan Kopp for three, straight away, and it's through. 6-0 Dixie State lead with 19.08 to go. Well, that's Jack's game right there. That, that play out of bounds was, was designed to get him that shot at the top, and he knew it was coming, was ready to shoot. Trailblazers a 6-0 lead in the early going. 18.55 to go, shot clock at 15. Dixie State playing a swarming man-to-man -man defense. Stain, staying with Jones. Jones will force a shot, air ball, and out of bounds to Dixie State. Jones went to the ground afterward. They're trying to get together and see if maybe there was a tip, and they're going to change it. They're going to give it back to Yellowstone Christian. They're going to say Stain tipped it. I'd love to see that one more time, if we have time, run that back again. Ooh, mm, I don't know. They didn't look like the ball really was affected much by it, but they are going to say that it was tipped by Stain. Well, Stain will get a block out of it then. Yeah, nonetheless, that was great defense by Stain. Absolutely. Jones to trigger, baseline left side, only four to shoot. Here's King with two and one. It's Boodoo getting it off, and it's an air ball, a shot clock violation. Same result. <laughs> Dixie State will get it back. You know, and, and that shows that, that defensive possession for Dixie was really good. Rotations were good, and to get a shot clock violation out of it is something Coach Judkins would love to see. Young blood to Green. Right wing, Pagankov for three, too strong. Tapped out by Schofield. No look pass inside to Stain from Pagankov. He lays it up and in. An eight nothing start for the Trailblazers. And come out coach Jamil Santil wants a timeout with 18.20 to play. It's a 30 second timeout. We'll keep it right here. Timeout's brought to you by Dairy Queen. You knew this team was gonna come out and, and, and start quick. Uh, putting that Western Oregon game behind them. They lead it eight nothing. Yeah. Great start there for Dixie State. You know, you look up at the score clocks in, you know, a minute and a half, eight, eight points, held them scoreless. It's a really good start. But now is the important part. You know, you don't want your guys to get sloppy. You don't want them to start developing bad habits. You know, you have to stay disciplined. You know, offensively, they're able to get whatever shot they want. But you can hear Coach Judkins in that huddle preaching discipline. I mean, stay focused, stick within the game plan, and try to get – things going continue to build on this momentum here's Reed right wing into the corner to Boodoo to Jones left side King King dribbling over the right side to Reed catch and shoot three right wing it's short rebound to Pagankoff and the Trailblazers want to push it Jack inside for Schofield they'll lay it up and in 10-0 Dixie State lead 17-50 to go they, they love to run and when they run in that that initial offense, that fast break offense is so good when you've got a big man that can run the floor. Just a solid effort right there on the fast break. Jones will force up a shot the other way. Dixie State the rebound. Pagankoff will whip it inside to Green. He threads the needle through two black jerseys and Green catches and scores. 12 nothing, 17-25 to go. Wow, Jack's all the times out there now. I mean, he's looking real good. Seeing the floor really well. A great start for Jack Pagankoff. I don't know about you, but I've really missed seeing this team in person. Yeah. Welcome back to the Burns. Practice is just not enough. Reed, jumper, no. Rebound to Green, and the Trailblazers have it. A 12-0 Dixie State lead with 17.03 to go. Green to the left side of Youngblood, driving the baseline left side. Swings it back to Green. Left side jumper in and out. Halfway down, and it popped out. And a rebound to Yellowstone Christian. 16.48 remaining. Andre Wilson up off the bench. He'll check in on the next whistle. King to Jones. Cameron Chatwin will also check in as he takes off the warm-up jersey. There's King with nine to shoot. Now to Jones. And a whistle and a foul. They're going to say that Dason Youngblood was holding Darian Reed as he was cutting through the paint down the baseline. I don't know if we'll see it here. That was away from the ball. You see the tail end of it there. It was chasing him down for sure. Dace was just trying to get through yeah. that screen a little bit. A little too aggressive trying to get around him. Shot clock back out to 20. Leighton Parker also checks in. And a three from the left wing. No good, but offensive rebound 
for the Centurions, and they'll reset. Here's King. Ball is tapped, it's loose, and Dixie State will have the steal. Wilson to Schofield, catches in the paint. He's got to get out of there now to avoid a three-second call. Back to Hunter, three-point land straight away. Over to Andre Wilson, Pagankoff, a little helter-skelter right now, but Dixie State still with 15 to shoot. Wilson, right wing, baseline right side, that Chatwin. Now into Schofield, loses, knocked out of his hands and off of his leg and out of bounds. A turnover. And that'll bring us to the media timeout. 15.44 to go. Dixie State, a 12-0 lead. We'll step away for the 60-second timeout and come right back to the Burns of the Trailblazer Basketball Network. When Southern Utah thinks of home furnishings, they think of Boulevard Home. But when Boulevard Home thinks about home, Southern Utah comes to mind. In 1974, local pioneer descendant Tony Whitworth decided to start a furniture business. He decided to name it after Southern Utah's most famous street, St. George Boulevard. Even though Tony has retired, his family's legacy still lives in who we are, a company dedicated to one goal, making your house home. Boulevard Home. Home is who we are. Camping World is here to help you connect to adventure and explore the outdoors with friends and family. Offering new and pre-owned RVs to fit every budget and thousands of parts and accessories for any need. Camping World has it all. With over 130 super centers nationwide, you're never far from America's number one RV dealer. No matter where your adventures take you, whether you need an RV, parts, or service, Camping World is here to help you every step of Welcome the way. Welcome back inside the Burns Arena, Dixie World State of 15. Or shop CampingWorld.com today. Numbers mixed. I, mean, I got to shake off the rust, too. It's been a couple of weeks since the last call. They stayed a 12-0 lead. Couldn't ask for a much better start. 55% from the field, 50% from downtown, eight rebounds. Trailblazers is off to a great start in this one. Yeah, they are. Offensively, they're doing a great job executing, and they're really being, they're able to get whatever shot they want. You know, their offense is working. They're, they're really pushing the ball. Uh, but Jack Pagenkopf is really seeing the floor well tonight, so that, that helps. Centurions with possession out of the timeout. Again, it's 12-0 still. 0 for 6 from the field is Yellowstone Christian for the first four and a half minutes of this ball game. Pass to Jones, guarded by Pagan Koff. Kills the dribble right wing. Finds King. King will jump a three right wing. Rims out, and Hunter Schofield the rebound. Outlet goes to Pagan Koff. Jack across the timeline to Hunter Schofield. Schofield. Backing in, has it stripped out of his hands and into the hands of Devin Jones. And he has it stolen right back from Jack Pagankoff. Back and forth we go. Pagankoff will lob it inside of Schofield. His shot, no. Cameron shot with the offensive rebound and he scores it in traffic. 14-0, Dixie State the lead. That was a good move. <laughs> you love when Cameron Chatwin can go up and get the ball high, keep his balance and go straight back up with it. 14-45 remaining, Dixie State a 14-0 lead. Right corner is Darian Reed. Reed jumps it, and he's fouled by Andre Wilson. And Wilson took some contact above the shoulders on that one. Eh. A little incidental, looks like there. And Reed will go to the line for a pair of free throws. You know, I, I would love to hear the explanation of the official is given right now because I don't, I don't know what he, he could have done. You know, I, I really, watching that, you know, he's moving his feet, his hands were up, it was textbook defense. So what, whatever he's telling him right now, uh, he saw something different than what we did. Reed makes both free throws and he'll get the Centurions on the board. 14-2, Dixie State, a 12-point lead. Pagankoff will lob inside of Schofield. He was looking for an alley-oop or what, but Hunter lucky to be able to catch that pass. Pagankoff back and forth inside. He'll lay it off the window. And a whistle rings out to bring the play to a halt. And there'll be a foul against Budu. No, Carrick, they switch to a matchup zone. They're, they're playing a matchup zone, and the worst thing you can do against a matchup zone is pass it and stand. You've got to cut, you've got to move, and you can see Dixie kind of a little bit stagnant offensively, that possession. Uh, th that zone is a, is a new look right there for Peking Koff and these guys, so it'll be interesting to see how they adjust to that matchup zone. Inbound pass goes to Andre Wilson, and he's fouled. 
in the paint, and he'll get a pair of vintage at Canyonlands free throws after the whistle. 14 19 to go. Dixie State a 14 2 lead. And this, the last Dixie State basketball game of the decade. Yeah. That's Although, whether or not as Wilson fires the first free throw, it's up and in. Whether or not the decade uh, begins uh, with the zero year or the one year is apparently up for some debate. That's right. I never, I hadn't heard that before, but it's all over social media right now. We'll go with. Yeah, I like it. The last game of the decade. Yeah, sounds good. Why not? Wilson, second free throw, up and in. 16 to two, Dixie State a 14 point lead. 14, 18 remaining. Here's Reed across the timeline. Bounces near side. Lalau is checked into the game. Reed is fouled by Andre Wilson. And, it, and he <laughs> falls victim to another one. And he's arguing it. He's had, he's had two fouls where the contact was initiated by the defender. I think what he's what he's saying yeah. is they're leaning into me. I can't get out of the way. They're leaning into me. How do you want me to play that? So be interesting to see what kind of adjustment he makes. He'll check out. Pass inside Dustin. Dustin will kick it out. Lalau. Now to the right corner. Swing it back. Three point land straight away. Here's Jones. Seven to shoot. Will fire. No, he traveled. Sixteen to two, Dixie State a fourteen point lead. Thirteen forty nine to go in the first half. Dixie State will have it back. Dixie Youngblood running the point on the floor for Dixie State. It's Youngblood, Parker, Green, Chatwin, Stain. Frank Stain just checked back in. Cameron Chatwin left elbow jumper is up and in. Eighteen to two, Dixie State a game high lead of sixteen. Thirteen thirty remaining first half. Arian Reed swings it to the left corner, Lalau. Back to the right side, Jones. Driving the baseline. Kicks to the left corner. King for three. He lets it fly, and the first field goal of the night is in for Yellowstone Christian. Trailblazers quickly up the floor the other way. Chatwin to Stain with an 18-5 lead over Leighton Parker. Catch and shoot three, left wing. No, but right back into Parker's hands. He'll swing it back around. Into the hands of Cameron Chatwin. Baseline right side jumper, no. Offensive rebound, Green. The putback is short. And into the hands of Seth Dustin for the Centurions. 12.48 remaining. And an 18-5 advantage. Here's King, another jumper from the left corner, no. We've got warm-up jerseys yeah. flying right past our heads. Ball back the other way. Frank Stain, jumper from the left corner, is short. Into the hands of Darian Reed. Here come the Centurions. 12-28 remaining, first half. Yellowstone Christian will set up the offense. Lau. Into the corner, Dustin. A deep two. Rimmed out. Dixie State the rebound. Here comes Youngblood. Dason into the left corner to Frank Stain. They leave him open. He says, thank you very much. And he'll knock in the three, his second three of the night, 21 to five. 16 point lead for Dixie State. Three pointers brought to you by Mountain America Credit Union. Can't leave Frank open. No, no, and they've made that adjustment on that matchup zone. They figured it out, the offense there looks good. I think that'll be a good test for Dixie uh, to get a good look at his zone to run their zone offense. You're under 12, a timeout coming on the next whistle. 21 to five, Trailblazers a 16 point lead. Shot clock winding down to three and two. Jones a deep three and he knocks it in. 30 foot three and he buries it as the shot clock expired. 21 to eight, Dixie State a lead of 13 points. Chatwin to answer for three straight away. Too strong, offensive rebound green and he's fouled on the putback. 11-19 to go, Dixie State a 21 to eight lead. The Yellowstone Christian has been able to take the lid off. They've got eight points. And they've made a couple of field goals. Dixie State, a 13-point lead, 21-8. to We'll take a 60-second timeout and come back on the Trailblazer Basketball Network.
for Grumps, the holidays can feel like the dumps. Doesn't all this good cheer? He asked. Just hurt your ears. But from time to time, <laughs> something changes their mind. I feel sad. She said. You can feel cheer instead. You might be right. So he got the card in a tree, and his cheer grew by three. <laughs> Get your Mountain America Rewards card today for three times the cheer this holiday. 11-19 to go. Dixie stayed a 21-8 to eight lead, 13-point advantage. The lead was up as high as 16 points. But Mike, the Centurion's able to find the, the bottom of the bucket and uh, get on the board. It's a 21 to eight Dixie State lead and 18% from the field, two for 11. And still at this point, it's still just a 13, uh, a 13 point lead. And you know, for how this game started, it felt like, man, it feels like maybe it should be a bigger lead than yeah. 13 at this point. And you know, watch out if Yellowstone Christian starts hitting some shots, this thing, uh, you know, could stay as a game. Yeah, you know, it's all about discipline. It's all about Dixie just sticking within their offense. And you know, they're gonna go on some runs. They're gonna hit some shots, that's okay. You weather it, and you, you, you got to move on. Jared Green misses the first free throw. Second one on the way, and in. 22 to 8. Dixie State a 14 point advantage. And Trailblazers will return. To Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference play on Friday against UCCS. A couple of big matchups coming up this weekend. Huge weekend. Here's Jones. Jones will jump another deep three, this time from the left wing. It's too strong. Josh Newbold the rebound. He just checked in. 10.50 remaining. Pagankoff to the right wing. Youngblood for three. No. Falls into the hands of Jared Green. The putback rims out. Frank Stain battling for an offensive rebound. He's got it. Pass inside Newbold, and he's fouled. And I believe we're going to get Lalau. I mean, Natal Lalau with the foul. 10.38 remaining. Dixie State a 22-8 lead. Pagan caught the trigger baseline left. Inbound to Newbold. Double team. He passes out of it. Finds Youngblood spinning in the lane, floating with the right hand. And it falls out. Newbold will dive out of bounds and save it back in. Here's Pagankoff. His shot goes up and over everything. But he's fouled to get two free throws. Another good out-of-bounds play. Good execution there. You can see that was a new out-of-bounds play. Maybe one they put in this morning. Shoot around. So good execution. Good patience. You can see that interior passing is spot on for Dixie. A hard fall for Pagankoff at the end of that play. You don't like to see that. Have a pair of free throws brought to you by Vintage at Canyon Lands. He calmly steps up and nails the ensuing free throw. Take a look at the Armac standings. Dixie State is 5-0 alone at the top. Just one game ahead of Colorado Mesa and Colorado School of Mines, both at 4-1. We've got Colorado School of Mines as Pagankoff makes his second free throw. Colorado School of Mines will be here on Saturday, 4-1 in the conference. UCCS is here Friday, 3-2 in the conference. So as it stands right now, both of both UCCS and Colorado School of Mines, if the RMAC tournament were this weekend, they'd both be in the tournament. 10-19 remaining. Here's Lalau. Will jump it from the right side and hit it for the Centurions. 24-10, Dixie State the lead. 10-10 to play. Pagankoff has the ball knocked out of his hands from behind. It's loose, and Lalau will come up with it to complete the steal for Yellowstone Christian. King to Reed. Trey Barry, his first touch, he just checked in. Ball bounce to King. Over to Barry, nearly went off the official. Barry able to handle it. Gives back to Jones, right hand floater in the lane. Too strong off the back iron. And Green will chase down the long rebound. Pagankoff quickly ahead to Newbull. Kicks it back out, Stain. Thought about a three, instead passes it up. Will jump and score it off the window. He's got 10. First to double figures, 26-10, Dixie State the lead. Another transition bucket for Dixie State. 9.23 remaining. Dixie State in this exhibition matchup against Yellowstone Christian College out of Billings, Montana. Top of the key. Three on the way from Reed. And it's 
no good. And bounces out of bounds back to Dixie State. Hunter Schofield will check back in. Jared Green going to get a breather. You know, it would be interesting, Carrick, if we, if we could track the, the time of pos each possession. Dixie State scoring probably with, within 10 to 12 seconds of the shot clock. For Yellowstone Christian, man, it, it's, it's down un under 10 just about every possession. So uh, it would be interesting to watch that. Dixie early on can get a wide open bucket. Frank Stain from the right corner knocks in another Mountain America three-pointer on the assist from Jack Pagankoff. You know, one way you can look at that is Dixie State leads at 29 to 10. Barry fires a three the other way, air ball, but into the hands of Jones. Over to Reed, and he hits with a foul. So he'll get two free, or he'll get one free throw after knocking in the shot. 29 to 12, Dixie State, a 17 point lead. Jacob Nichols would check in. I was about to say, if you look at the field goal attempts, and I, this may not be the best way to measure what you're looking at, is, you know, time of possession, if you will. Dixie State, but Trailblazers have 24 field goal attempts to just 17 yeah. for Yellowstone Christian. The Dixie State kind of up tempo, getting more field goal attempts. Darian Reed will knock in the free throw, to complete the three point play. Good little run here by Yellowstone Christian. 29 13, Dixie State maintaining a 16 point advantage. 8 25 remaining in the first. Schofield will hang. Shot is partially blocked by the Centurions. Here's Reed, pulls up for three left side, couldn't get it to go. And here come the Trailblazers. Youngblood. To Pagan Koff, back to Dason. Over to Pagan Koff, right wing. We'll bounce it inside, ball is loose. They're looking for Schofield, that is tip taken away. Jones will have it, top of the key. Now leads for Lalau. And Lalau just threw it away. And that'll bring us to the under eight media timeout. 7.50 remaining. Dixie State 29, Yellowstone Christian 13. Take the 60 second timeout and come back on the Trailblazer Basketball Network. There is a place where looking out means looking in. Where an impression lasting only a few seconds will be imprinted on a life forever. Where courage is forged and innocence rediscovered where remembering is rewarding and forgetting unforgettable. There is a place where truth is felt and where seeing is believing. There is a place. Radio Dixie 91.3. We don't play that. Nope, not that. A big fat no there. That's what we play. And stuff like that. On St. George's only alternative, Radio Dixie 91.3. Oh, and from 9 till midnight, we play this. I need a wonders. And this. Radio Dixie 91.3 FM. Well, Frank Stain with 13 points to lead Dixie State. He's also three for five from beyond the arc. And, and a good start. Good, good to see him get going offensively. As, as you know, the first six, seven, eight games of the season, he was there, he's on fire. And then kind of production tapered off a little bit. And, and now you like to see that and after the break, getting his legs under him again and, and scoring at will tonight. Yeah. Well, if, if you look at the lineup right now for Yellowstone Christian, the tallest guy on the floor right now is 6'2", and you know Dixie should be pounding the ball inside. So look to see some a lot of paint post touches here in the next few minutes for Dixie State. Speaking of pounding it inside, Jacob Nichols will get his first bucket of the night, a layup from the left side, 31 to 13, Dixie State the lead, 7:25 remaining. And the Trailblazers will force a turnover. The pass goes out of bounds. Andre Wilson set to check back into this ball game. Dason Youngblood will come out. And Andre's just hoping that his next chunk of minutes will go a little bit better than his first one. Frustrating start. And a few, you know, two quick foul calls where the contact was initiated by the defender on both calls. Schofield backing in on Lalau and he lays it up and in easily. Hunter Schofield lays it in, and it's a 33-13, a 20-point Dixie State lead with 6.58 remaining. 
Lalau. Over to Barry. Left side. Over to Lalau. 12 to shoot. Back to Barry. Three point land straight away. Barry will leave for Jones. Steps into a deep three. It rims out. And Dixie State going to get called for a foul. And it's going to be Jacob Nichols. And he'll kind of laugh it off with Hunter Schofield. Referee says Nichols pushed off a little bit. Trying to claim that rebound. And they'll give Centurions a fresh 20 seconds. Inbound to Lalau. Lalau hands it right back off to Reed. Reed drives inside, draws some contact, no whistle. A layup, no good. Frank Stain the rebound. Stain across the timeline, leaves for Pagankoff. Hesitates, drives inside, kicks to the corner now. Wilson swings to Nichols. He's bumped inside. And that'll be the seventh team foul against Yellowstone Christian and a one and one coming for Jacob Nichols. It's great ball movement by Dixie. You see, if the ball hits the ground, it's like one or two dribbles and pass. You can see him just moving the ball really well. That, that execution is exactly what Coach Judkins wants to see his team doing. You don't want to see the ball stick. You want to see it moving and keep it going side to side. So much better job offensively, getting guys involved and, and staying within the offense. So some quality possessions there for Dixie State. 6.21 to go in the first. Dixie State a 33-13 lead. And here's Jacob Nichols to the front end of the one and one. The shot dies on the back iron and then it falls through. He'll earn one more. Nichols with three points tonight. Peter Swanberg will check in. For Yellowstone Christian, his first appearance tonight. Shot is up and in. Nichols will make both free throws. Free throws brought to you by Vintage at Canyonlands. And on your Camping World scoreboard, Dixie State a 35-13 lead with 6-10 remaining. Barry. At the top of the key and King. Swing it right back to Barry in the right corner. Barry will bounce to Jones, seven to shoot. Jones gets inside, will lay it up with the left hand. Can't get it to go. And Nichols the rebound for Dixie State. Hand off to Pagankoff. In the left corner, Wilson will dish to Schofield, and Hunter can't handle the pass. A turnover back to the Centurions. Jones throws it, nearly threw it away. A lot going on on that play, but ultimately Yellowstone Christian will maintain the possession with 20 seconds on the shot clock. You know, again, Dixie doing a very good job of, of forcing them outside of their offense. You can see him working on a little half-court press uh, kind of a trap thing that, you know, you haven't seen much this year. So they're, they're trying some a few things new defensively. 525 remaining. Dixie State a 35-13 lead. Here are the Centurions with five to shoot. It's Reed, 30 feet from the bucket, guarded by Nichols with two to shoot. Pulls up deep three off the back iron. Hunter Schofield the rebound. Schofield outlet pass to Pagankoff. In the left corner, Wilson travel. Frustrating night for Andre Wilson continues. Looks good. You know, he's got to learn how to play through it, make some adjustments, and, you know, he, and he's the guy that can do it. 35-13, 22-point 12, uh, lead for Dixie State, 4.58 remaining. Barry looking for space. Finds Swanberg. He'll jump a three left wing. Too strong. Pagankoff the rebound. Pagankoff. Whip it to Stain, catch and shoot three, right corner, and he splashes it home. His fourth triple of the night. Three pointers brought to you by Mountain America Credit Union. 16 points is a great half there for Frank Stain. 38 13, 430 remaining. A runner the other way from King. It rims out. Stain's got it on the way back up the floor, and he's fouled by Darian Reed. Chance to get a few more points here for Frank Stain. 425 remaining. And Stain could hang a 20 spot here in the first half. Two free throws, or one and one, I should say, for Frank Stain. 
He's got 16 to lead all scorers. Youngblood will check in for Jack Pagankoff. Leighton Parker also at the table. Did not check in, so that tells you he's going to check in for Frank Stain. Stain may look over and say, I'm going to miss this one. Now he makes the first free throw. 39-13, Dixie State, 26-point lead, 425 to go. Stain will have one more free throw. On the way, and he, <laughs> he missed it. The rebound to Budu. Stain saying, I I'm going to stay in this game and get one more three and try to get to 20 points in the first half. 414 remaining. Lalau into the corner to Budu. Here to Jones. Driving inside, the ball's tied up. What a fantastic move by Dacian Youngblood. It won't go in as anything because Yellowstone Christian has the arrow. But he got in there and just tied this thing up. Great hands. <laughs> Great hands. Parker will check in for Frank Stain. Now a whistle before the ball can even be inbounded. They're going to say Hunter Schofield fouled Devontae King. In the lane. Hunter Schofield and Devontae King having a good laugh about the call. Both of them. Nice little chat about what happened. And the officials are having a little chit chat at the free throw line. Or are they making a dinner reservation to Red Lobster? Maybe who? Could be. Love that commercial. Here we go. Probably not where I'd go for dinner. I'm not a fan of lobster, but. We're at four minutes to go here in the first. And a turnover as Swanberg stepped on the sideline in the corner. That'll bring us to the under four media timeout. 3.58 to go. Dixie State a 39-13 lead. We'll take a 60-second timeout. Come back on the Trailblazer Basketball Network. I got you right where I want you. I make this one. It's over. I win. No pressure. Bring it. We may not always play good, but when we want to look good, we come to the Dixie State Campus Store. Located on the second floor of the Gardner Center. We'll see you there. When I was growing up, my mom was extremely tidy. We were trained to put things back where we got them from. One day, when I walked into my mom's house, I felt like I walked to someone else's house. There was stuff everywhere. And just growing up, the way I grew up, and to see this transition was very alarming. When Sean talked to me, it was a wake-up call, and that's when I went to the doctor. Three fifty-eight to go. Dixie State a thirty-nine thirteen lead. Trailblazers forty-six percent from the field, thirteen of twenty-eight, five of eleven from outside, eight of ten from the free throw line. Four of those five three-point shots from Frank Stain, seventeen points, four rebounds. And 3.58 to go until the break in a 39-13 lead. Just 4 of 24 from the field tonight uh, is Yellowstone Christian. As Mike Treblazer is getting it done on both ends of the floor. They've, they've forced eight turnovers on the defensive end and uh, scoring the ball very well offensively. Exactly what you want to get out of this type of a game tonight. Yeah, great half. I mean, you love Frank Stane. You look at the scoreboard and see Yellowstone Christian 13, Frank Stane 17. So... Uh, he, he's done a great job, been a key component of this offense. Back in play we go. Here's Cameron Chatwin on the right block, and he'll get it to go high off the glass. Chatwin with six points, and Dixie State a 41-13 lead. 3.35 remaining. Here's Jones, top of the key, Lalau. Lalau, guarded by Chatwin, will bounce inside, it's tipped. The Dixie State can't get it. Falls into the hands of Devontae King, and he'll splash home a three from the left wing. 41-16. Dixie State leads with 3.15 to go until the break. Chatwin to Andre Wilson, left side. Swing it back to Leighton Parker. Parker to Schofield. Skip past Youngblood. 
Loses, regains left wing, now to Schofield. High post left side. Oh, go pick and roll, and Schofield not, couldn't handle the pass from Dason Youngblood. And here come the Centurions off the steal. Boodoo driving inside, layup is short. Cameron Chatwin the rebound. 2.42 to go. Dixie State a 41-16 lead. Youngblood fouled as he pulls up for 15-footer from the left side. And for the first time this season, and it won't go in as an official appearance because this is an exhibition game, but the first time this season, we got Jamar Erga set to check in. Good to see him back from an yeah. injury. You know, it's a good time of year to get him healthy. Uh, he's definitely going to be a guy that they will need in RMAC play. So good to see him back on the floor. Erga, six foot four junior guard from Toronto. And he played two years at South Plains Community College. Good to see him in for the first time this season. Youngblood will make both free throws, a 43-16 lead. Josh Newbold also checked back in. 2.34 remaining. Here's Barry. Over to Jones, three left wing, and he knocks it in. Centurion starting to heat up from outside, 43-19, Dixie State, 24-point lead. Youngblood. To the free throw line, will pull up, free throw line jumper off the backboard, no, but it tips, puts it back in, he goes back to the backyard, Dade's playing a game of tipping. Get, you get an extra point because the ball didn't touch the ground ever, right? Athletic move. 45-19, Dixie State, 26 point lead, 159 remaining. Barry, the left side and Jones, gets into the paint, ball knocked out of his hands, so he was able to regain the dribble. He'll jump a three, right wing, no. Cameron Chatwin, the rebound. Pass ahead to Urgas. Skip past Parker, left corner. Back to Chatwin. He'll catch and he's fouled in the lane on his way to the bucket. Exactly One. where you want to pass it to your big guy. He's going down the middle of the lane. It wasn't a bounce pass, it wasn't a chest pass. He threw it up nice and high. You can see where Cameron Chatwin had to go to catch this ball. Nice and high. The ball was tipped a little bit even, but. That's exactly where you want your big guys to catch it, up high where the defense can't get it. Chatwin, the first of two free throws. That's by Vintage at Canyon Lands, up and in. 46-19, and with that, Mark Hatch will check in. The sophomore guard from Mesa, Arizona, played one year at Scottsdale Community College. Hatch, a good shooter. Chatwin will make both free throws. 47-19 the lead for Dixie State. 130 to go until halftime. Jones to Lalau. Over to Trey Berry. He'll jump a three with Leighton Parker right in his face and he knocks it in. 47-22, Dixie State a 25 point lead. And at the fifth three point make of the half for the Centurions. Newble, free throw line to Urgas for three left corner. Too strong off the back iron. And out of bounds off of Lalau chasing down the defensive rebound. Dixie State will get it back. Opportunity here with you know 103 to go, another out of bounds play. You know, it, it's a great time to work on some of these out of bounds plays. Maybe you haven't had a chance to get a good look outside of practice. Here's Chatwin. Baseline right side, backing in on Lalau. Gets into the paint, missed the left-handed floater, but Josh Newbold there to clean it up. Gets the rebound and scores. 49-22, under a minute to go until half. Jones with 20 on the shot clock, 42 on the game clock. Over to the right wing, will bounce it in to Dustin, and it's pinballed around and off of Dustin's feet and out of bounds. Impressive half for Dixie State, 49 points on the board. Holding Yellowstone Christian to 22, so solid effort on both ends of the court tonight, Garrett. 35 seconds remaining, first half. 25 on the shot clock. Hatch to Chatwin. Wide open, so he'll jump a three, missed it. And the rebound tapped into the hands of Urgas, and he lays it up and in. Jamar Urgas with his first bucket in the Dixie State uniform, 51 22, excuse me, 49-22. Dixie State 
the lead with five seconds remaining. A runner in the lane, no, Newbold the rebound, and that will do it for the first half of play. 51-22, Dixie State a lead. Life stats are a little slow to update. And it will be a 51-22 lead for the Trailblazers. We've both said it, so we sound like broken records already, but Dixie State getting the job done on both sides of the floor. Really great half of basketball for the Trailblazers, as we always do. Quick hitter thoughts on this first half of action before we take the break and then really dive into it inside the Seven Oaks Jewelers Halftime Report. Mike, uh, your quick hitter thoughts on this first 20 minutes of basketball. I think there's a lot of great things, positive things we can focus on, but eight turnovers. You know, they've got eight turnovers, not what you want to see first half. So that, that, that's going to be, you know, the one thing that Coach Judkins is going to talk about, it, are those eight turnovers. Dixie State, a 51-22 lead. Coach Judkins will always find something yes. to talk about. You, know, you, can't, you can't let the players think that they're playing the, the perfect game quite yet. You know, and, with, and with eight, you know, seven, eight turnovers, they're not playing the perfect game. They've got, they've got to be able to, to clean that up, do a little bit better with that in the second half. But overall, great half of play for the Trailblazers in the this first half, 51-22, the Trailblazers leading it at the half. Let's step away. We take the full five-minute break. We come back with the Seven Oaks Jewelers Halftime Report. We'll give you the numbers. We continue to break it down and get you set for the second half. What will be the final 20 minutes of Dixie State basketball in this decade? Five minutes and back on the Trailblazer Basketball Network. Hey, Bobo. Do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Can birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! For over a century, Dixie State University has been shaping the trailblazers of tomorrow by providing a culture of active learning, active life. With a paradigm of real world experience mixed with cutting edge technologies and rich traditions, we provide one of the most affordable educations in the West set against the most stunning backdrop on the planet. Where do you find the titans of classical music in St. George? Classical music on Radio St. George, 100.3 FM. Where do you find the legends of jazz? Evenings on Radio St. George, 100.3 FM. Radio Dixie 91.3. We don't play that. Nope, not that. A big fat no there. That's what we play. And stuff like that. On St. George's only alternative, Radio Dixie 91.3. Oh, and from 9 till midnight, we play this. I need a one And this. Radio Dixie 91.3 FM. Word. I'm the awkward silence. You try to avoid me, then there I am again. But an awkward silence can be a great thing. Like Kelly here is about to demonstrate. You haven't really been yourself lately. Are you okay? Find out how you can help a friend with their mental health at seizetheawkward.org. 
For over a century, Dixie State University has been shaping the trailblazers of tomorrow by providing a culture of active learning, active life. With a paradigm of real-world experience mixed with cutting-edge technologies and rich traditions, we provide one of the most affordable educations in the West set against the most stunning backdrop on the planet. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Radio Dixie 91.3, Young the Giant, something to believe in. John, what's on you want to hear? Next, Miss Calendris. You'll be on the swap team, the swap team. Welcome back inside the Burns Arena. Dixie State, a 51-22 lead. We welcome you inside the Seven Oaks Jewelers Halftime Report. And uh, for you TV and Internet viewers, you, you can see uh, a couple of weeks ago we had him on, on the pregame show as he made his first appearance back here in quite some time. Marcus Banks, uh, former Dixie State uh, junior college player in the early 2000s, went on to have a, a very lengthy uh, uh, NBA and professional career. And, and, and now he's back and, and he's got his his, his group the, the mb3 and they did a basketball camp today here in, in st george a clinic and and uh they honored him at halftime here he's a member of the dixie state hall of fame and and someone that especially with his move to to division one uh, he's very interested in, in being a part of the dixie state basketball program still and we're gonna you know we talked about it a couple of weeks ago but we'll take a minute here too as well I mean, you're gonna see i think a lot more of, of marcus banks around as he you know, returns home as he told us even on on the air in that pregame show that we had him on a few weeks ago is that, you know, this this is home for him. He, he learned a lot about life and about basketball here, and just really appreciative. And and uh, we appreciate having him back too. And you know, everything that he did for Dixie State athletics and, and continues to do for Dixie State athletics, and just fun to have him here. And it will be continue to be fun to have him around in the future. Well, not the name that will resonate very deeply with a lot of Dixie State fans. You know, that were here during those days and national championship years and the things that, that those teams are able to do. They were so fun to watch for that group. You know, I mean, Dixie State fans, they, they, they loved watching Marcus and Mo Baker and, and those teams. So uh, great to have Marcus back. It, it, it's always good to see him. Uh, glad to be on the same side as him. As, I was going to say, we always have to bring out that, that you were coaching with Coach Judkins at Snow against <laughs> Marcus Bank. So it's good to Good to be on the same side now and instead of having to try to devise a plan how to stop him, you know, Absolutely. try to devise a plan of, you know, how we continue to grow this athletic department and grow this uh, Dixie State men's basketball program and, and have success at the Division One level. So Absolutely. You know, it's just r real quickly, my, my oldest daughter, the, n the night that she was born, we were preparing to play Dixie, and I remember sitting in the hospital room with a game field of Dixie playing, <laughs> 
and my wife asked me, what are you doing? And I said, you're right. I'm not going to come up with anything that's going to be able to stop Marcus Banks tonight. <laughs> just a phenomenal athlete, just a, a great guy, and it's great to have him back in St. George. Trailblazers a 51-22 lead here at halftime. And, uh, again, it's great to have Marcus Banks back. Great to have him around. Uh, great to, to have him part of this Dixie State family. This is the Seven Oaks Jewelers Halftime Report. Let's, uh, let's take a look at some numbers. Uh, you just had a fan asking you for how many. Is he asking how many assists Jack had? Jack picking off with six assists. How many got? Six. Okay. Six so assists. So now that we've got. Steals. Now that we've got. Must be a family member, friend, <laughs> at least. You know, how close is Jack to a triple-double? Can he do it tonight? Uh, six assists for Jack Pagenkoff, 11 assists for this Trailblazer team uh, as a whole, 11 assists on 17 made baskets, 47% from the field, 38% from beyond the arc, 85% from the free throw line. Uh, the story of the first half, though, was, was the ball movement. It was everybody touching the ball. I mean, look at how many different guys have scored. I mean, let, let, let's count them up, how many different guys have scored here. In this game already, I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different Trailblazers have already scored in this game. They're getting everybody involved, and then Frank Stain has been a real beneficiary of that. He's six for eight from the field, four of six from beyond the arc, 17 points, four rebounds. Cameron Chatwin has come in. He's got five rebounds uh, and putting those back for eight points. Uh, he's contributed. Five points for Jack Pagenkoff with the six assists. Everybody contributing tonight while also forcing nine turnovers on the other end of the floor. Now, Dixie State has turned it over a few times you know, themselves. They'll try to shore that up. But a great first half of play as they've been really unselfish. And it's been a really fun product to watch out on the floor tonight as, as they get the job done in this exhibition against Yellowstone Christian. Yeah, definitely a size advantage. You know, when you, when you look at... Uh, Height-wise, Dixie should just dominate in, in, in the paint. And that first half, you saw him run that fast break offense and one or two passes and Cameron Chatwin or Hunter Schofield or somebody was open on that first reverse. And it, it's tough because they're so used to shooting that shot that it's got to be patience now. That shot is going to be open all night. You don't want the ball to just stop right there with that, with that shot at the key. So you saw Dixie pass up a good shot for a better shot many times. And that type of discipline and that, that type of work is going to pay off you know, next weekend. So hopefully this half, I guarantee you, Coach Judkins has set some, get, set some goals. You know, I'm sure he has said they don't score more than 40 points. 40, 40 points. Or uh, he's, he's given them specific goals outside of just winning. And, and they will come out focused on things that are going to be very detailed on what they need to accomplish to get ready for next weekend and the rest of our Mac play. It is the Seven Oaks Jewelers halftime report. And the women's game, uh, they won their matchup as well, 76-32 against Yellowstone Christian. And as we take a quick look ahead, uh, huge matchups against UCCS. We mentioned it in the first half a little bit, but let's talk a little bit more about it right now. Dixie State is 5-0 and on the RMAC. Uh, they'll play UCCS on Friday, 3-2 and two in the RMAC, and then a huge matchup with Colorado School of Mines, 4-1 and one in the RMAC, just a game behind the, the Trailblazers in the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference. NC State had to make the trip to Colorado Springs and then to Golden last year. This year, uh, you know, right, uh, right after the, the holiday break, you got to go on a, on a trip to St. George. It'll be Colorado, both schools' first trip into the Burns Arena and, and Dixie State with a huge task right off the, the bat and cannot overstate how important these games will be in terms of the, the conference race. I mean, you, you're undefeated, you're a top, you're leaving the RMAC after this year. You're going to Division One, and they want to do what they did when they left the Pac West, and that was win the conference and, and leave on a high note. And in order to be able to do that, number one, you got to protect home court, but you got to win the games. You only play these teams, you only play Colorado School of Mines and UCCS once during the season. So you don't get a chance to get back at them if you drop those games. Got to protect home court. Got to win these games. Can't overstate how big these games will be this weekend. <laughs> They'll be big for, for a lot of different reasons. And, and one of them, like you just talked about the RMAC play, but you know it's all about that postseason, doing everything you can to put yourself in position for postseason. And you know the, the rest of the schedule, it's going to be an exciting finish. You know From here to March, 
uh, looking through the schedule today. Uh, very exciting and, and looking forward to the second half here first, but then next week, uh, that, that RMAC, when, when that kicks off next week, it'll be a very yeah. fun weekend. It'll be a fun weekend as UCCS and the Colorado School of Mines will be in town and, and get a good look at head coach John Judkins for you TV and internet viewers as he continues to, to go over that plan that they talked about in the locker room. And, and this, he just never stops coaching. I no, mean, there's no. there's never a time. You, you see some coaches that they'll they'll take a seat and you know kind of let things play out for a little while. And in my five years here, I, I don't think, and, and I guess a year of, of kind of intern and volunteer work before that, my six years here, I don't think I've ever seen Coach Judkins just kind of sit and let things play out. He's always coaching, whether it's on the bench or pacing up and down or in the huddle. He's always coaching. Everywhere, you know, and that was one of the funnest things, coaching with him for so long. He spent a lot of time on the road recruiting or doing different things. But, uh, you know, I, I remember one drive that he and I took to CSI from Snow College. And I got to, I got up there and thought, I'm worn out. It's a long, you know, it's a long drive. I mean, it's not a short drive. Drawing up plays and, and talking about, you know, strategies and, and things that he's just writing down and so focused. And it's just always going on in his head. Uh, he's always looking for something new, something innovative, trying to get guys motivated. Uh, he's, he's got a great basketball mind, and, and, man, he loves to coach. Back in play we go. Dixie State will have possession to start the second half. Original starters for both teams. Here's Pagankoff on the right wing, and he'll bury a Mountain America three-pointer from the, the angle right side. 54-22, Dixie State extends the lead. Jones to the right side and King back to Jones. Swinging it near side, Reed. Bounce to King. Three-point land straight away, Jones will drive into the lane. Over the shoulder pass is stolen by Jack Pagankoff and some contact on the way back up the floor. And I think they're gonna get Seth Dustin on the way back up the floor. You see the, the steal. A little bump there, extends the arm, gets called for foul. And a frustration foul. And Dixie State will set it back up. Stain, to the left side, out into the corners. Jason Youngblood buries it back to back triples for the Trailblazers, and it's a 57 22 advantage. Another great possession with the ball. Didn't touch the floor. Great ball movement. Guys moving without the ball. And that time Youngblood found himself wide open. 18-58 remaining. Here in the second half. Dixie State a 57-22 lead. Here's Lalau. Will jump at 17-footer left side. And Jared Green goes up high and snares the rebound. Outlet pass ahead to Pagankoff. Hesitates. Now pulls up. Left elbow jumper on the way. Rims out. And here comes Devin Jones. They'll pull up for three in transition, no. And the rebound to Dason Youngblood. And it's five on four right now as Stain will lay it up and in. They're letting this thing play out. There's an injured player, my goodness. <laughs> I was about to wonder how long Darian Reed got hurt on the previous Dixie State possession. Down and, and then back. it went back up, back down, and then back before they finally... Stop play. They'll help him up. And he'll get an applause. And he's able to jog back. Although with a little bit of a limp back to his sideline. Trey Berry will check in. And Dixie State going to steal the inbound pass. And Frank Stain will lay it up and in with a foul. He made the he's the one that scored. Right before the referees finally noticed the injured player on the floor. So he's got 21 points now. And he's trying to match his jersey number now with the free throw. Well, that, that little, Laying in. 22 points. That pause right there for the injury allowed Dixie to set up a press. <laughs> they jumped into that press and uh, caught Yellowstone Christian off guard. 62-22. 18-15 to go. Stain pressuring Jones. Jones will give it to King, left wing three, dies on the front iron and goes in. Doesn't matter how you get it in as long as you do. 
62-25, Dixie State. A 37 point lead, Youngblood to try to answer. Misses the left corner three, but saves it back in. But it will go to the Centurions. King, on the left side, and Devin Jones. Jones. To the left elbow, a runner, no, out of control shot. Jason Youngblood the rebound. Pass head to Pagankoff. Jack to Frank. Frank inside Schofield, leaving for Jason Youngblood, and he elevates and mashes it home with one hand. I haven't seen him dunk in his two years here yet. It's a high percentage at least, shot. At least in game. 64-25. Three-point shot the other way from Dustin, no good. On the dunk, the net came out of the loop on the rim, so it's hanging. Green will score the other way. It looks like it was taped up on the rim. A quick fix before the game. Dixie State leading 66-25, 16-38 remaining. Now it looks like we're playing out on the playground. Yeah. We get up on a ladder and fix that thing. 16-28 to go. Lalau, fadeaway jumper, baseline right side, short. And <laughs> Frank Stang going to get called for a push-off. 16-22 <laughs> to go. Dixie State a 66-25 lead. Yellowstone Christian maintains the possession. Lobs in clear across the timeline. And it is caught by Devontae King. Over to Jones. And Jones <laughs> breaking some ankles. Misses the shot, though. Offensive rebound, Dustin. He can't score it. Hunter Schofield grabs the rebound. Pagankoff will pull it for three in transition off the left side. Not the shot Dixie State's looking for on that possession. And here come the Centurions. Andre Wilson going to pick up another foul. That will send Devontae King to the free throw line. But first, we'll have the media timeout. 15.58 to go. Dixie State 66, Yellowstone Christian 25. 60 second timeout and back on the Trailblazer Basketball Network. You know, we may have started out small, but we were great. Families and fans rallied behind their team. The community cared, and everyone showed up to cheer. Now, we're bigger than ever. Dixie State is going to the Vision One. Here we go in transition, and he throws it down with one hand. But at the end of the day, it's the community and fans that make us great. Whether you give five bucks or a thousand, every dollar, every seat in the stands, every one of you can help blaze our trail to Division I athletics because this is our team. Fifteen fifty-eight to go, Dixie State, a 66-25 lead. Welcome you back inside the Burns Arena. Hope everyone had a, a good Christmas, a good holiday break. Wish you a very happy new year. Devin Jones to trigger baseline left side for Yellowstone Christian. A lob in to Devontae King. King to Jones in the right corner. Jones will float it baseline right side and it's up and in. Wow. He stayed the other way. Parker looking inside Chatwin. Getting to the lane. Lays it up and in with the left hand. Chatwin has 10. Dixie State at 68 27 advantage. Lalau. Well, trying to bounce inside to Dustin, but a tip taken away by Schofield. Parker ahead to Wilson. Wilson back to Parker. 
Parker to Pagenkopf, left side. And Schofield on the left block. He spins to the lane and floats and scores with the right hand. 70 to 27, 15.05 remaining. Dixie State outscoring the Centurions 19 to 5 so far in the second half. 14.50. And some change to go here in the second half. Dustin. Working on Schofield, one dribble, whips it out. Lalau, fadeaway three, left wing, and he hits it. 70 to 30, 14, 38 to go. Dixie State quickly the other way. Here's Chatwin, he's gonna get a bucket out of it. They call a goal to him. Chatwin tried to dunk, and Dustin also got his hand up on top of the arc. So we get a look at it here. Oh no, that's afterward, putting the ball back in. Making sure he got credit for the point. 72-30, Dixie State the lead. 14-25 to go. Lalau, leaping leaner inside, couldn't get it to go. Dixie State the rebound. Pagankoff, bouncing into Schofield. He wants it, he backs in on Dustin and lays it up and in. You can kind of just see the look of frustration on, on Dustin's face. The shoulders kind of drop. Ugh. Goodness, yeah. it's a tough matchup tonight. Very tough matchup. You know, Hunter Schofield is very good when he gets position. He starts posting at the high post. So by the time he gets down to the block, he's got great position to get the ball. Swanberg pulls up baseline right side and he'll splash home a 15 footer for Yellowstone Christian, 74-32. Dixie State, the lead. Schofield the other way, right hand floater, no, gets his own rebound. Backing in on Dustin. Gets inside and he'll lay it up and in. Pagenkoff saying, hey man, it was open in the right corner. Could have hit that three. And he says, ah, oh, it's okay, you scored. 76-32. Dixie State the lead. King to Dustin. Jumper from the left side is short. Andre Wilson the rebound. Wilson leads for Schofield. One dribble, now to Pagenkoff into the corner. Wilson for three, right corner, in and out. Ball is loose, and Dustin comes up with it for the Centurions. 12.50 to go. He stated 76-32 advantage in this exhibition matchup between the Trailblazers and Yellowstone Christian College out of Billings, Montana. Five seconds to shoot. Here's Devin Jones, and he's fouled in the paint. That'll be Hunter Schofield picking up the infraction. Jason Youngblood, Josh Newbold, Jacob Nichols back into the game for Dixie State. You know, watch, watching this half play out, the, the first four possessions, they were sharing the ball. They were just stuck with the offense and sharing the ball and just great passing. Then they kind of got away from it. And they were taking quick shots out of the offense. They've got back to that rhythm now where they're running their offense and, and being a little more disciplined. Leighton Parker, a tip and a steal. It'll be one-on-one -on -one with King, gets inside, high off the window, no. Finger roll, couldn't score it. Here comes Boodoo. Deep three from Jones, right wing, he knocks it in. Deadly from about three steps or more beyond the arc. 76-35, Dixie State the lead still. 12 minutes to go, we'll have immediate timeout on the next whistle. Youngblood, left elbow jumper, yes. 78-35, 11.45 remaining. Jones hesitates, bounce into the left corner, shot on the way and another three. This time from Devontae King, 78-38. 11.30 remaining. Newbold, baseline right side. The jumper, yes. He stayed going quick, but finding success. 80 to 38. Now it's on the defensive end now. They've, they've given Yellowstone Christian a little bit of confidence. They're starting to let those threes fly. King, another three right corner, too strong. Dixie State, the rebound, a pass ahead to Newbold. And he's fouled with contact. Or scores with contact. Of course he's fouled with contact. 
That's what a foul is. 82-38, Dixie State gets the bucket and the foul. 11.07 to go here in regulation. We'll take a 60-second timeout and come back on the Trailblazer Basketball Network. When I was your age, I was just like you, fascinated by stars. But now I get to search for life in the universe. And who knows, maybe life is looking for us too. So we're like aliens to them? Yeah. Does anyone want to be a scientist now? I do. Awesome, we need more girls in STEM. Maybe we can find aliens. I think the road less traveled Run free, unwind, unravel Someplace outside with lots to do Green trees, red rocks And don't forget that blue sky The sunshine shining, fun shine Pouring on me, think I might just stay a while Say hooray all day because the sun It's gonna shine on me, sun It's gonna shine on me, 11.07 to play, Dixie State at 82 Yellowstone Christian College as we wind down the 2019 calendar year and get set for 2020, an end of a decade, a decade that has been an extremely uh, magnificent decade for Dixie State uh, in athletics and, and in basketball specifically. You look at all the banners uh, inside this arena. I don't know if we can get a shot of, of those banners for your TV and Internet viewers as Josh Newbold gets set for uh, a pair of free throws here. But you've got... I mean, count them up. How many? There they are right there. How many different 12. regional appearances, conference championships, and, and you look at as it, it was just one free throw. I thought it was two. Just one. Newbold misses the free throw, but Yellowstone Christian with it. What a decade of basketball for this Dixie State squad. Reed for three. Left wing, no. Newbold the rebound and quickly outlets to Youngblood. Youngblood into the corner, here's Urgas. Urgas will bounce to Nichols, and he'll score off the window. 84-38, Jacob Nichols with the bucket, 10.35 to go. I think Coach Judkins has instituted the, the, the Hoosiers philosophy. He wants four passes before each shot. You know, they're moving the ball now really well. Voodoo to Jones. Jones to King. Back to Jones, floater, in, out, in again. 84-40, 10.08 remaining. Jones with 13 points to lead the Centurions. Newbel, gets the ball on the floor. He'll drive inside and score it with the right hand. Says, if you're going to give me the space, I'll take it. 86-40. 9.50 to go. We are under 10. What has been a very fun night inside the Burns Arena. Jones will pull it for three left wing. Knocks it in, 86-43, 16 points for Devin Jones now. 9.30 remaining. Nichols looking inside Newbold, catches, reverse from left to right, can't get it to go, but then he scores his own putback. There was Youngblood on the putback, excuse me. Nine oh eight remaining. Jones dribbles through the legs, loses. It's free. Youngblood will pick it up, and he's fouled by Jones on the way back up the floor. You know, Jones is a rhythm shooter. You know those shots that he's hits. He uses the dribble to get his rhythm, and that time the dribble just got away from him. He, he he's so focused on getting that rid rhythm. He he knows it, and you know he, he's a great shooter. You know when he's got that rhythm going, he's able to pull up. You know, he's hit some deep shots, uh, but he's he's a pretty good shooter. That time the ball getting away from him. Having a little friendly conversation with Frank Stain on the Dixie State bench and even giving a high five to Jason Youngblood as he went to the bench was Devin Jones. Newbold driving inside, no. Nichols the tip, put back, and one. Jacob Nichols is back here playing tip in. <laughs> Play a little game of 21 out here. He just sent Josh Newbold back to... Back to zero 
on that tip in. Good take there by Josh. Yeah, Noble. absolutely. 90 to 43, oh. Nichols, the bucket, the free throw, yes. For a 91 43 lead, 8.45 remaining. Centurions, a three from the left wing. It rims out. Reed, the offensive rebound. Here's Jones, another three. Another three. 91 46. Jones heating up here in the second half. 8.25 remaining. Newbel, one dribble in the lane, jumper, yes. Touched every bit of the iron and falls through. 93-46. That's a good in shot the, for Newbel, right there in the middle of the key. You know, he, he does a good job of, of getting position there, and uh, that's his shot. That mid-range jumper is his location. Reed, a three from the right wing, and he buries it. 93-49. And Turians have now connected on 12 three-point shots tonight. 12 of their 17 field goals have been beyond the arc. 93-49, Dixie State the advantage. Ergas to Hatch in the corner. Hatch bounces to Nichols. No, can't get the layup to go. And it's out of bounds, and Jacob Nichols dives out of bounds trying to save it. And that'll take us to the under eight media timeout. So in the final Dixie State basketball game of the decade, Dixie State closing in on the century mark. 93-49, 7.32 to go. 60-second timeout and back on the Trailblazer Basketball Network. Tell me not in mournful numbers, life is but an empty dream. For the soul is dead that slumbers, and things are not as they seem. Art is long and time is fleeting, and our hearts, though stout and brave, still like muffled drums are beating. Funeral marches to the grave. In the world's broad field of battle, in the bivouac of life, be not like dumb driven cattle, be a hero in the strife. Lives of great men all remind us that our lives can be sublime, and departing, leave behind us footprints on the sands of time. Footprints that perhaps another, sailing over life's solemn moon, a forlorn and shipwrecked brother, seeing, shall take heart again. Let us then be up and doing with the heart for any fate. 732 still remaining, Dixie State at night. Learn to labor and to wait. With 732 to go, in an exhibition match, and Dixie State in its first game back. In fact, this was the first day that they could even touch a ball or, or work out together as a team after the seven day uh, moratorium from the NCA Division II side of things and this is basically today's practice and I got to be happy with how this game has turned out. Yeah, very, very happy. You know, getting a lot of guys some minutes. Jack Pagenkopf only logging 18 minutes tonight. Frank Stain 19 minutes. So, you know, it's good to get back and get your legs and, and start playing basketball game before Armac tips off this weekend. Brock Staley checked in during the timeout. He's in. 7.15 remaining. 93-49 Dixie State lead. Here's Lalau to Jones. He'll knock it in inside, but he runs over Brock Staley in the process, and it's an offensive foul. You, know, you can see in Brock Staley's eyes, he, he, he's playing help side defense. He slides over, and he knew exactly what he needed to do. Got outside the circle, took it right in the chest. You know, and, and guys, the, the starters that are on the bench, they love to see that. They see a guy like Brock Staley that just works hard in practice. He gets a chance to get in the game, 93-49, and he still plays very hard. Ninety-three forty-nine, Dixie State. The lead with seven oh six remaining, and I'm not sure what the the officials wanted to look at something. It's an exhibition tonight, so we don't have the official replay here. Uh, I'm not sure what they exactly they wanted to look at, but came over and we reminded them, hey, remember no no replay, and they said, oh yeah, that's right. I don't know if there was something that. Oh, well, that's what they're looking at. Good catch. Devin Jones kind of 
Gave a knee to Brock Staley after the play. Here's Staley, a shot rimmed out. Yellowstone Christian, the rebound. 6.42 remaining. Reed will drive inside, lays it up and in with a left hand. 93-51, and Coach Judkins doesn't like what he sees. He's going to take a timeout. 6.33 remaining. That's the first coach's called timeout of the half, so it will stretch to a full. So let's take it. 93-51, 6.33 to go, 60-second timeout and back from the Trailblazer Basketball Network. Six thirty-three to play. Dixie State a ninety-three fifty-one lead. As time ticks away on the final Dixie State basketball game of the decade. When we were talking about those banners, you know, earlier you look at 2010, 2011, 2012, 13, 14, 15, 17, 18. Those are all. NCAA tournament appearances and a lot of those, five or six of those conference championships and a couple of tournament championships as well. Leighton Parker for three right wing and he buries it. 96-51. You know, remember State the lead. Remember that play, Carrick. That, that, that was a situational play where Coach Judkins knows at some point they're going to need a three late in the game with very little time and he used that moment to draw it up and try something. So you remember that play. You're going to see it another time this year, season. Centurions the other way. Lalau bouncing inside. King throws it up. No good. Ergas the rebound. 6.02 remaining. Here's Ergas. And he loses. No, he regains. Kicks to the right corner. Parker for three again. Yes! Dies on the iron and falls through. 99-51. 5.45 to go. Timeout's brought to you by Mountain America. Not timeouts, three-pointers. Jones inside, gets a circus shot to go. They're going to say he was fouled out near the three-point line by Brock Staley. So the shot won't count. It's NBA, and if he was James Harden, it probably would. Yeah. You take a look at it here. He did, took a couple of steps between contact and shot. Jones, lobs into Reed. Reed, cross-court pass to the Lau. Back to Reed. Pulls up, deep two. Brock Staley will chase down the rebound. Pass ahead to Parker. With the next bucket, Dixie State will eclipse the century mark. Hatch, jumper, no. Ball is loose. Staley got his hands on it, but it falls to the other team, to the Centurions. 5.08 remaining. Jones tries to cross over, loses it, regains. Passes back to King, back to Jones. And a jump ball called as Hatch will dive on it. And the arrow stays with Yellowstone Christian. Not many loose balls tonight. You know, the if we were tracking that, I, I can't remember the last loose 50-50 ball. There's another one. Yeah. Another jump ball called. 
and Dixie State will take it back on the alternate possession. This one was kind of a... <laughs> exact same play yep. Dixie ran to get that three-pointer. Hatch, left wing. Now to Urgas, gets inside, kicks to Parker, right wing three, no. Rebound to Jones, and it's tied up. And he's swinging the elbows, and Brock Staley goes to the ground. What are we going to call here? And we've got Devin Jones exchanging words with the entire Dixie State bench. There's no official replay tonight, but we're going to take a look at it here. As Brock Staley was trying to tie the ball up, and Devin Jones put it a, his shoulder and an elbow. They just showed the replay on the video board up above. There's no official replay tonight, so let's see what the officials decide. They may have. I still think they're working on that reservation of Red Lobster. Yeah. And they may have some boo birds on their hands if they don't decide to do anything here. They're going to call an offensive foul. N nothing more than just an offensive foul on Devin Jones. I think it's the right call. I mean, that was, you know, he, there was a lot of contact. Yeah. I think Brock did a very good job of selling. There was some good contact there, but I, I think it's the right call. N nothing real malicious. You know, it didn't look like he, he went high with his elbows. So uh, I think the officials got that one right. Ninety-nine to fifty-one, Dixie State still one point shy of the century mark. Hatch, inbound pass, gets it back left corner, three on the way, couldn't get it to go. Staley fighting for the rebound, <laughs> and it's going to stay with Yellowstone Christian. Brock Staley was sure that went off. Maybe he's jogging back the other way, and the official signal Dixie State's way. Hatch will lob into Ergas. With 4.19 to go, now to Nichols. Here's Hatch. Hatch to Staley. Staley to Parker, left wing. They'll bounce into the corner and Ergas. Ergas to Parker. Parker to Nichols. Nichols to Hatch. Pump fake, he'll jump a deep two, right corner. No. Ball is loose into the hands of Devin Jones. Can't get to 100, can they? Everybody that has played for Dixie State has scored except for Hatch and Staley. Jones, circus shot, couldn't get to go. Dixie State the rebound. Pass ahead to Urga, saved in Hatch. Layup, no, but he's fouled and he get free throws. And that'll bring us to the under four media timeout. 3.36 to play, Dixie State. 99, Yellowstone Christian, 51. We'll take the 60-second timeout and come back on the Trailblazer Basketball Network. There is a place where rocks bleed and nature blushes on a battlefield green with envy, where dimples determine destiny and a tiny wooden tee holds the outcome in the balance. There is a place where friends are opponents and opponents are friends. Where the prize is elusive, the conquest is captivating, and the score isn't settled till the drinks are down. There is a place. All right, man, I need you to go deep. All right, I'll catch this one, I promise. Post route, back of the end zone. Got it, let's do it. We may not always play good, but when we want to look good, we come to the Dixie State Campus Store. Located on the second floor of the Gardner Center. 3.36 okay. to play. Welcome back inside the Burns Arena, inside the broadcast. Trailblazers, a 99-51 lead. Although Dixie State has gone scoreless 
can give you the exact number. Trailblazers have gone scoreless over the last 217 as they try to get to the century mark and pass the century mark. And here comes March, Mark Hatch to the free throw line. One of two Trailblazers who have not scored tonight. Try to hit triple digits with this free throw here. On the way, and he missed it. Too strong. Free throws brought to you by Vintage at Canyonlands. On the way, and in. 100 to 51. And that free throw make is met with a hearty applause as Dixie State gets to the century mark. And whistles the other way. And a foul will go against Staley. A lob inside and it's stolen away. Hatch, pass ahead to Ergots. And he'll throw it down with one hand in transition. Okay. 102-51. Nice little reward for those fans that stuck around. And Ergas can get called for a foul, reaching in. He jumped from really far away <laughs> on that one. He's been waiting for that for a long time. My goodness. 102-51, next chance. We don't have time now, but next chance. Let's take a look at that play. Again, Dustin will catch and score it inside. That'll be our leading candidate for our Catering Concepts. In fact, let's call it our Catering Concepts play Tough. of the game. Tough to beat. Right there. We'll take a look at it here in just a moment. Jacob Nichols to Parker, to Hatch, to Ergos, right corner three. No. Trey Berry the rebound for the Centurions. Reed. Floater, no, gets his own rebound, and he's fouled the second time around by Jacob Nichols, and two freebies coming for Darian Reed. Here we go. Our catering concepts play of the game. Hatch ahead to Ergas, and he jumped from outside the arc inside and threw it down with one hand. That was pretty. 102-51, first free throw from Reed is no good. Second free throw is good. 102-52. He stayed a 50-point lead. Wow. Ergas. Good. Thinks he stayed with a 50-point lead. I like the sound. Roll out the tongue, didn't it? It may not say it again this year, but who knows? You never know. Well, ready to come to the game. You know, my wife asked me if she should come, and I said, you know, probably come home. I think we'll beat this team by 50. So. <laughs> I'm hoping that it's close so I can justify that. <laughs> <laughs> Barry for three off the backboard, no. Brock Staley the rebound. Staley the only trailblazer that has played tonight that hasn't scored. Here's Hatch, he'll pull up. Jumper inside the arc, right side, he scores it. 104-54, 148 remaining. And a timeout. Timeout taken by Yellowstone Christian. It'll be a full timeout. We'll just keep it right here, 141 remaining. I would note that Coach Brandon Rogers from Yellowstone Christian will be the sharpest dressed coach to come into Burns Arena this year, sporting the, we yes. call that salmon maybe? Salmon, salmon coat with jacket. a white bow tie. And I do, do got to say, it's Jamil Santil. So oh. that Brandon Rogers was a women's, women's coach. coach. But Jamil Santil, I, I noticed that though, the very sharp white bow tie. <laughs> What's up, Jack? How's it going? Jack Pagenkoff wants to see the stat sheet. <laughs> Looking over our shoulder during, during the game. <laughs> Frank Stain wanting to wish his mom the best. Yes. Wanted me to let sh make sure that we tell her that he, he loves her. Anything else, Frank? <laughs> <laughs> we had three guys over here. Then we said that there were some people here. And they said, no, don't say that. You can't say that on the air. Yeah. 
Don't worry, it's okay. 141 to go, Dixie State, a 50 point lead. 104, 54, having some fun inside the Burns Arena tonight. And Coach Judkins still drawing up plays over there like well, like it's coming said, down to the final possession. I mean, nothing changes. The situational. You, know, you work I mean, on it when you can. He's going to use this as a game situation where you've got officials, you've got a team that that's not going to know your play. So he's going to run some some very situational things. But he's got the, his starters on the bench so he can talk to them. He's still coaching them on the bench, watching, so they get a chance to see some of these things. One forty-one remaining. Yellowstone Christian. With possession out of the timeout, 104-54. Here's Reed. Will step into a deep three. Whistle on a foul before the shot attempt. It's going to be Jacob Nichols. His third. He's making sure he's get his money's worth tonight. Him and his mustache. Yeah, looks good. Holiday mustache. It does. Nothing wrong with a good mustache. Dustin, the front end of the one and one, missed it. Brock Staley, the rebound. And let him take a shot on this end. It's Staley's shot. They try to get it to him, and it's stolen away. Reed with the steal for Yellowstone Christian. Reed. Lalau. Whistles ringed out and the play stops. Shot clock never reset from the other end of the floor. There's an awful lot of talking. Are you sure you want to go to Red Lobster tonight? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> of all the places in town. Yeah. Get those biscuits ready to go. <laughs> I think I might stop on the way home. <laughs> I might, I might have to now, too. You got me, you got me hungry over here. One of six remaining. Ergos, another steal. Here we go. And he'll lay it up and in with the left hand. And he, he felt some pressure behind him. And there's no need to possibly get hurt going up for a dunk in that situation. Whistle and a foul against Brock Staley. Might foul out. And that's the ninth team foul against Dixie State. And <laughs> Dustin back to the line for front end of the one and one. Nichols the rebound off the miss. Ahead to Hatch. To Ergas. Parker to Staley, turnaround jumper, no, short off the front iron. Good look. That was the chance right there, because when they get the ball back, the shot clock will probably be off. Here's Barry, shot blocked by Ergas. Taken by Hatch over to Ergas, and they got to pull it out here. With a 52-point lead, you can't put a shot up in this situation. Dixie State 106. Yellowstone Christian, 54. As Hatch and Reed have a laugh together as this one ends. Comes to a close. Dixie State, a successful slate of exhibition games tonight against Yellowstone Christian. 76-32 in the women's game and 106-54 in the men's game tonight. And the Trailblazers now can shift the focus to UCCS on Friday and Colorado School of Mines on Saturday. The Trailblazers winning this one, 106-54. Carrick Sagan with Mike Olson with you as we quickly break things down before we go to break and come back with the Guru Sports Grill post-game report. Dixie State will take their customary jog around the court, get everybody a high five. Mike? It's a fun one tonight. That was a good one. That, that was a good tune-up for this week. It's exactly what, you know, I, I think Coach Judkins will be a little bit disappointed in the, the points allowed. Yeah. There'll be a few things, but I think overall you're not going to get that type of production and that type of work done in practice, right? It, it was the best well, thing they could have done it's, tonight. 
it's hard to simulate you know real game situation you can do situational stuff at practice you can do scrimmage but uh, to get the 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 full game experience it, it just, you can't duplicate it you That's can't right. can't copy that and so tonight they're able to do that and uh to get some things done and and to even go to the drawing board and have some you know some fresh film and and say you know we got to work on this or we're going to be maybe in some trouble on friday right. and, and saturday and <laughs> and uh you know, big games coming up this weekend. So exciting to see this team coming out. You know they've been chomping at the bit because I, I, I don't know. Maybe you did they have – probably didn't have any practices. And no, they couldn't have had any no. practices after the loss at Western Oregon. So yeah. losing that game at Western Oregon was the last thing they had on their minds as far as the basketball is concerned before getting back out here tonight. So they wanted to get back out and remedy that as quick as they could, and, and they did. 106-54. A big win for this Dixie State squad. And, uh, you know, big games coming up this weekend, and, and we're going to break it all down. We're going to step away. We'll take the three-minute timeout. We'll come back inside the Guru Sports Grill post-game report. We'll break it all down. We'll name it SkyWest Airlines Player of the Game. Uh, remind you what our catering concept play of the game was as well. 106-54, your final. Dixie State wins it. Three-minute timeout and back on the Trailblazer Basketball Network. Radio Dixie 91.3. We don't play that. Nope, not that. A big fat no there. That's what we play. And stuff like that. On St. George's only alternative, Radio Dixie 91.3. Oh, and from 9 till midnight, we play this. I need a one And this. Radio Dixie 91.3 FM. Word. I'm the awkward silence. You try to avoid me, then there I am again. But an awkward silence can be a great thing. Like Kelly here is about to demonstrate. You haven't really been yourself lately. Are you okay? Find out how you can help a friend with their mental health at SeizeTheAwkward.org. For over a century, Dixie State University has been shaping the trailblazers of tomorrow by providing a culture of active learning, active life. With a paradigm of real world experience mixed with cutting edge technologies and rich traditions, we provide one of the most affordable educations in the West set against the most stunning backdrop on the planet. Trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! I'm on buzz. I spend too much time on my phone. What? I should take your phone away. No, no, no. I'll call for a ride. Hey, why does my face look like that? <laughs> I'm, I'm playing with these new face filters. Okay, you know what? what? Yep, that's mine. I'm gonna need that back. No. Nope. Kevin!
Welcome back inside the Burns Arena. It has gone to final. Dixie State, a 106-54 exhibition victory over Yellowstone Christian College from Billings, Montana. And the Trailblazers, a 52-point win uh, over the Centurions. You know, everything, Cyber, everything you expect to see in an exhibition matchup tonight is the Trailblazers back in play for the first time since early this since December 20th, since 10 days ago. And they didn't have any practice before this one, but this was practice tonight as Dixie State able to, to, to get into the gym and, and, and to get into an actual game format. Huge for this team tonight. And, and a bounce back win after losing at Western Oregon. And uh, count them up one, two, three, four, five different guys in double figures. 12 different players score in this game. Nearly every person that played scored. Uh, Trailblazers 53% from the field. Uh, <laughs> 54 to four lead in points in the paint. 29 points off of turnovers, 25 second chance points. I mean, just a game, you, you force 19 turnovers in the game, uh, a game where you come into it knowing you're going to be able to get some things done tonight. They are able to get those done. And, uh, you know, now it's you know back to work for big games this weekend. But uh, other than, like we mentioned before the break, maybe Coach Judkins would have liked to give up a little fewer than 54 points. Other than that, uh, you'd have to be really ticky-tacky to, to – come in and find anything really wrong with this game uh, in terms of the Trailblazers? I think number one will be ball movement, and that's tough. You know, I mean, like you said before, the guys have been wide open. It's tough to pass up those shots, but I, I think the first half they made some good adjustments with ball movement, so I think, you know, Coach Judkins might touch, touch on that a little bit, uh, moving the ball. But I'll tell you the most impressive thing, I looked really hard to find something to be critical the first half and settled in on turnovers. Uh -huh. Halftime, they had nine turnovers. Finished the game tonight to Carrick with ten. With ten. So, you know, it, it shows some discipline. You know, when you turn the ball over nine times in a game like this to come out and really put an effort on those little things. That was one of our, our keys is to focus on the little things, and I think Dixie State did that tonight. And, and, and that was, you know, if we want to go back and, and, and give a shout-out to our Lonnie Boys Barbecue keys of the game. I mean, that was – that was the very first thing you said. It's the little things tonight, and and they're able to do those and able to get those done, and uh, just fun to see this Dixie State team work. Let's let's give you some more individual numbers uh, in this one as we are in the Guru Sports Grill post game report, the last one of the year, uh, as uh, Trailblazers win this one 106-54. It was Frank Stain, uh, 22 points, a game a game high mark of 22 points, and I mean, look at this line, 22 point, 8 of 10 shooting, 4 of 6 from downtown, 4 rebounds, an assist, a block, 2 steals, 22 points in 18 minutes of play yeah. tonight. And if there's, you know, you want your shooters to be productive and had good games. And, you know, there was a little bit of, of a drop off after the first, you know, five or six games of the season, whether it was teams, you know, figuring him out and, and scheming more, just not hitting the open shots. It's good to see. Frank Stain hitting those shots. He's such an important part of this Dixie State offense that it was really good to see the start that he had and then the few minutes that he played in the second half were productive as well. And he finishes with 22 points on, on an 8 of 10 shooting, 4 of 6 from downtown in just 18 minutes of play. I, I would be hard-pressed not to name him our SkyWest Airlines player of the game tonight in, in, unless you can and offer a comparing argument uh, to the contrary. No, I think he's, he's definitely the guy tonight. I thought... You know, Jack Pagenkoff logged a, a very impressive 19 yeah. minutes. I, I thought the work that he did, uh, phenomenal uh, for the first half. And, you know, the, those starters, they, they really got in. They got some reps. They got their work done and then had a chance to sit back and support those guys that do not get uh, the time that they do. Yeah. So I, I thought a very good team effort tonight, guys supporting each other, very good energy. Uh, it, it was good to see uh, Trailblazer basketball rebound after that loss uh, at Western Oregon. So let's go with that. Our Skyway Airlines player of the game tonight uh, is uh, Frank Stain, the freshman. Um, how about our Catering Concepts play of the game? We we uh, we ran it back in game, but let's do it again if we've got it right here. Dixie State, one of many fast breaks. Mark Hatch comes up with it, lobs ahead to Jamar Urgas, and he throws it down. Hammer dunk <laughs> with one hand. I mean, he cocked that thing all the way back and hammered it home, and that's the first game he's played in a Dixie State uniform this season, like we've mentioned, he's been battling an injury. 
He's been wanting to get back on the floor, but he's taking the proper steps to do so. And tonight he gets out and, and does it. And you can see how, how active he was on both ends of the floor. Six points, a couple of rebounds, a steal, a block, you know, dunk. He's going to be someone that, that is going to contribute greatly to this Dixie State squad in this, uh, I don't know if you call it, I don't know if we're to the halfway point of the season yet, but at least into this 2020 portion of, of the season and into the heart of conference play. And, and it's like you mentioned earlier, that those are the type of guys that you need where, you know, this is your last year in Division Two, And we are talking about the decade that this team has had and uh, and all those banners hanging. Uh, number one, you want to hang another one. But you're, you're looking at possibly, you know, this year if you can continue to do the things that you've done and take care of business through conference play. Dixie State, through all the success they've had, they've never hosted a regional. Yeah. And, 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 and you don't want to count your chickens before they hatch, and certainly there's a ton of basketball still to be played. But I would think that, that, a, that a conference championship and, and not just qualifying for the NCAA tournament but possibly hosting the NCAA regional would be an attainable goal yeah, very. this season to see this team and, and to get guys back like Jamar Urgas. It, it only helps. And, you know, big conference games coming up this weekend. But, you know, the sky's the limit. Yeah. for this team and, and would love to be able to see them accomplish that and to not have to travel during postseason play. No, that would be nice. And it, we mentioned before, it's a big week. Uh, the, the thing that's great about this week, Carrick, is you've got the teams now here. Yep. You know, they're in St. George. They're not leaving. They'll be here until class starts on Monday. But they don't have class and the stress of school to worry about. They, they, their, their big focus right now is Basketball. two wins this weekend. And they've got time in the gym. They've got time in the film room. And, you know, a guy like Coach Judkins with that much time and, and players that are that dedicated, uh, it, it's great to, to have that time in preparation for such a big weekend that we'll see next week. We mentioned Frank Stan. He had 22. There was four others in double figures. Dason Youngblood, he had a great night. Five of nine shooting, 13 points, seven rebounds, seven assists. I mean, we want to talk about triple-double watch. Yeah. Man, he was right there, 13, seven, and seven. Uh, 12 points for Cameron Chowan. He had a great night tonight. Five of nine, six rebounds, 12 points. 10 points each for Josh Newbold and Hunter Schofield. Those are your double-digit scorers uh, for the Trailblazers tonight. It's 12 different players able to get on the scoreboard tonight. And head coach John Judkins joining us inside the Goo inside the Guru Sports Game Sports Grill post game report. Coach, right. congrats on the win. Happy New Year. Happy oh, New Year Merry to Christmas. you. Uh, Merry, yeah, Christmas. Merry Christmas. I mean Happy New Year. That's what no, you do, it's right? Coming it's next, up. Coming yeah, up, but uh, coming up. Merry Christmas and, hap and, and Happy New Year to you. We were just mentioning here as we were talking about this game, it seemed like you got everything you wanted and then some probably out of what you wanted to get out of yeah. tonight. Maybe wanted to have not allowed quite as many points, but uh, you know, 106-54 victory. Not much yeah. you can complain about there, but I'm sure – you found something to let the guys know about, but uh, first day back. I mean, this is the first day that you could even be back in the gym. Yeah, that was hard. And you hard. come and you and you play a game. I mean, so yeah, what's that, that like? That was really hard because normally you have a day of practice to kind of get that stuff out of them, a Christmas break. I mean, you you trust them that they're going to go to the gym and run and shoot, but you know they they don't do it as hard as they should because no one's pushing it's them. It's Christmas, coach. Cr yeah. I know, but still, <laughs> it's like you know you can only sit in your house for so long. I don't I don't get that. But again, it was good. That's why we scheduled it. Um, I was glad we did and. You know, I, I thought we did some good things. We shared the ball um, good. The second half, I thought we did a lot better job. I wasn't too happy. The first half, we had 11 assists and eight turnovers. Second half, we had two turnovers, and I can't remember how many assists. But ended with 30. Ended 30, with 28. 28. So a lot better job that way. You know, um, they went small. They went. They zoned us the whole time. You know, it's just hard to to get some really easy baskets. I thought we. I said, hey, let's, let's get it inside. We did. We scored 54 points in the paint. Which was which was good. I thought Jack finally started to to see things. I mean, he has nine assists, did some good things. But uh, you know, it was a it's something like you said. We we wanted to do come out and run. A crowd was great tonight. That was yeah. that was unexpected. That was nice. And and our guys played hard. Nobody got hurt. Um, you know, I could see someone breathing pretty hard, and we knew that was going to happen. And so we kind of took it as, hey, was this better than just coming in and practicing? Yes, this this was better for us. It's going to get us ready for Friday and Saturday, and that's that's the whole reason why we did it. And we give yeah. give these guys credits for coming. I mean, they had a lot of guys hurt. You saw on the bench, yeah. you know, they got hurt, and uh, they didn't have their full full team as well. But you know, we, sometimes when you're beating a team as bad as we were at halftime, you got to set goals 
to kind of keep them focused because, you know, it's probably going to be over. We lost one of our four-minute battles, which we weren't happy with. That should never happen. And we always say, hey, great teams, they play great no matter who you play. And sometimes you kind of play down to your competition. And at times I saw that, not a lot, but I saw a little bit of that. And then we got a lot of guys' minutes, too, that don't play a lot. Mm -hmm. Brock Staley, to, you saw a little bit of Jamar, what he can do. He's athletic as can be. Um, you know, he just got to learn stuff. He just hasn't practiced a lot because he's been hurt. And so it was good to see him get some minutes. And that's what I told him at the end of the game was, you know, when you guys get in there, even if it's a 20-point game, 30-point game, 40, whatever it is, you have to play it like it's tied so that I can trust you so that when the game is on the line, then I know, hey, you know what? Last game we beat a team by 30 or 40. He was playing hard. He was doing that. And I thought Mark did that a little bit tonight. I thought Brock did that a little bit tonight. But Jacob and Jamar sometimes were – kind of just floating around a little bit. And so th that's something they have to work on. But, again, they haven't seen a lot of time. So it's hard to, to see that. But I was just happy to get everybody in. Everybody got a lot of minutes. I mean, the most guy had 21 minutes was, was Leighton, uh, which surprised me when I saw that stat. I thought it was somebody else. But he had the most <laughs> minutes. Um, so we got everybody a good time and not too much to kind of keep them rested for Friday, Saturday. But we got to have three really good practices this week, Tuesday, uh, Tuesday Wednesday, and Thursday, because we got two – very good teams coming in here over the weekend. Chatting with head coach John Judkins in the Guru Sports Grill post-game report. And, uh, Coach, we talk about, you know, everybody contributing tonight, everybody uh, really helping accomplish the goals that you wanted to tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, how about, you know, you look at some lines and just some individual performances. You know, Frank Stain, good to see him come out and, yeah. I mean, put up that the lines that he did in just 18 minutes of play. And that's what it seemed like. You you mentioned that you know minutes were limited tonight, just trying to get everybody in, but it seemed like everyone came in and, and took advantage of the minutes sure. that they were in and, well, yeah. and, and made sure that. Yeah, we talked about that at the beginning. We said, guys, I'm going to go. You're going to play three or four minutes of time, and you're coming out. I mean, it's not not because you know you're doing something wrong. It's just more of I want you to go hard and get you know get their lungs going again, running, and then I'm going to get you out. So they all kind of knew that. Frank hit a couple shots early. And anytime you hit a couple of shots, I don't know who you are playing. It, it, it makes you feel good, and it's going to be a good game. He's got to work on his mid-range. If we can get him to drive it a little bit more, because he's, he's shot, shooting the three good, but now teams are flying at him, and he's got to be able to do that. But like I said, 22 points, 18 minutes. He was our impact player of the game. I love Jared's stats. You know, he, yeah. he only played 13 minutes, but he gets eight rebounds, four offensive, four defensive. Five for two from the field. You know he didn't get a he didn't get any assists or anything like that. He's but again they were in his zone, a little bit different that way. But I thought he gave us some some good minutes as well. And and uh, you know and again everybody else that came in there and gave us a little spark here and there was pretty good. Josh shot the ball well. You know five for five for seven. Josh has been struggling the last couple of games, just getting his confidence going again. And uh, you know that's why we started Jared tonight too as well as just trying to wake up Josh a little bit. He's kind of been floating a little bit. And tonight he got got some easy basket. Josh can score. You know, when teams zone us, you got to be licking his chops because that's that's where he's really good at that high post, and that's exactly what he did. So you're right. We got some, you know, not one of our best games from one or two guys, but, again, a lot of guys got in, a lot of guys got their legs under them, and that's exactly what we wanted to do. Coach? Ole says nothing. Got that's quiet. Ole oh, over there. You lost it's, your voice? No, that's it's kind of like the microphone. It's kind of like the sound system. Uh, yeah. he's I got, think we, he's, we broke this game down to death. Yeah, <laughs> he's got uh, a, a, an appointment over at Red Lobster. He's there talking you go. about it. There you go. Go. But no, he was talking about it throughout the whole game. Yeah, I got to go get some dinner now. I got mad at our guys. We had 15 offensive rebounds the first half. I challenged them to get 10 or more each half, and we only we only got. Uh, what, four second half, but again, we shot 60%. 60%. Yeah, there's, there's, there's no rebounds <laughs> so, to be had. That's, that's true. You so, about that. So it was good. Good and glad nobody got hurt. And, uh, you know, now we just got to keep uh, keep getting better. Yeah. And, and uh, again, tonight, thank you for everybody who came out. It was, it was a, I, I just didn't think it was going to be anybody here, but it was it was great. We got to have people here Friday, Saturday, because yes. these two teams we're playing are, are good. One of the teams that we play on Saturday won the conference. They're favored to win the conference again. So we need to get everybody we can here. And, and uh, our guys play better when everybody's here. There's no question. So thank you again, and uh, Happy New Year's to everybody. You too, Coach. Happy New Year. Congrats. Hey, Coach John Judkins joins us in the Guru Sports Grill post-game report. And uh, and a direct quote from, uh, from, from the coach, Mike Olson, here. We've broken this game down to death. So I think yeah. it's time to call it quits for the night. 
Uh, Frank Staines, your Skyways Airlines player of the game. Jamar Urgus with the breakaway dunk, the one-hand tomahawk throwing it down, hammer dunk. is a catering concepts play of the game. We are back in action on Friday, hosting University of Colorado, Colorado Springs. Again, they're 3-2 and two in the conference uh, right now. And then Colorado School of Mines, 4-1 and one in the conference right now. These are huge games. So we've got to be here, got to pack the burns on Friday and Saturday. We'll be here. We'll have the call for you on both of those games. Uh, hope uh, everyone is able to have a good week, a happy and a safe New Year. Mike, go, go have some fun. Drink some Martinelli's. Yes. Uh, a <laughs> little toast for I, I try to save help. those. I try to save those for October when the Red Sox win the World Series. <laughs> okay, <try>. okay. <laughs> you, are you calling your shot? <laughs> yeah, no. I'm calling it now. Calling your shot. Uh, That's our year. All right, we'll have to have a discussion off the air. I'm a Red Sox fan too, so discussion off the air. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Uh, big shout-out to Sean Denovan for coming in uh, during the holiday break to, to board off these games for us tonight. Shout-out to, to Marcus Farnsworth and James Farnsworth and the crew, CEC TV, getting us uh, on the TV and, and on the air all night long. We'll see you on Friday and Saturday. Have a good night, everybody.